Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, your home for the crypto neo news, education, and opportunities. My name is Ryan. I'm Lucas. I'm Jacob. And we've got some news to share on topics that we love to follow up on when it comes to regulation and blockchain and crypto because, well, we love to talk about all the innovations happening in the world of blockchain and crypto, whether it's Ethereum, proof of work chains, proof of stake, layer ones, layer twos, DeFi, NFTs. We've got a playlist here. We've got some videos to walk you through how to start your Web 3.0 wallets, sending, receiving, staking. But blockchain and crypto, when you're learning this new technology, that's all it is, is a new technology. It's emerging in the market at large, in the world stage, in the world economy. And as it grows, the growing pains, there will be some disruptive features. There will be some creative destruction. There will be some people that maybe they don't like the way it's interacting and in, 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 in infringing upon their market share or affecting their profit margins. So it's good to understand uh, where people are coming from when they're complaining about certain projects. So let's talk about Bitcoin. Let's talk about regulation. Let's talk about one of the more pop culture, popular mouthpieces for Bitcoin in mainstream media, Michael Saylor. Yeah, you know, there's there's a common theme that I see and that it's relevant to this, obviously. But there's a big theme that we're, we always go back to and it's how tightly correlated crypto is with the traditional financial markets, right? You can almost look at the, the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ and you can kind of make a, 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 you know, a guess, educated guess on what's going on in the crypto markets. You know, red days on one or re, wait to red days on the other, right? And vice versa. And it's not just uh, the correlation that we see. There's also similar problems that you see in crypto that are, that, are, that are reflected in the traditional markets, right? There's issues with liquidity and hot money flows coming in and then flowing out. And what happens when liquidity dries up, right? With liquidity pools, for example. Leverage. There's also leverage. There's issues with leverage that, that we talk about. You know, what's happening with the loop oh, positions. Yeah. Uh, looping and leverage and how that is, uh, has similar vulnerabilities and risks that you see in traditional finance. And there's another example of the same analog and it's on, in the, in the um, domain or in the category of special interests pleading for certain regulations or rules which benefit them and punish their competitors. Like that's an old story in capitalism. Uh, if you even go back to like the robber baron days and the days of trust busting and, and, the, um, and, the, and the Teddy Roosevelt administration, there was a lot of uh, regulations that were put on capitalists that turns out the capitalists themselves were championing and lobbying for. And the idea was is that the higher these burden, this this the higher the entry, the burden to enter that market is, the easier it is for the established and entrenched firms to make a larger margin market share and raise prices and have less competition. So it's, so it's sometimes in, what you're saying is that if they charge uh, thousands of dollars to register your new alternate coin on the blockchain, then the days of people freely being able to create. Uh, well, no longer. And then you'll have to be a big conglomerate or a large Bitcoiner to be able to Perplex. afford that. And, and so yeah. it protects those people who are already there because they don't have to worry about that fee. It's negligible or they don't have to pay right. it. So it's yes. barriers to entry in economics. That's why we love to share our the economic perspectives when it comes to blockchain and crypto. Nothing we share is financial advice, commercial advice, uh, medical advice, or or, or legal advice it's just our research and it's our it's educational purposes right but right. like you said protectionism the idea of lobby groups and, and lobbyists going to uh, legislators and having them make laws that benefit their company and maybe at the behest of of the competition so really this is the way the game works and and now ironically michael saylor was being championed around mainstream media as, as if he is this spokesperson for the revolutionary new Bitcoin, uh, be your own bank, digital money. But in reality, for those who in crypto have been listening to him, if you follow our channel, then you've heard our perspectives on this and we'll share it again. But Michael Saylor, 
is is really a, he's a businessman who runs an investment uh, company and he's he's got a bottom line. He's not for banking the unbanked or seeing Bitcoin do its own thing opposed to traditional financial markets. He would like to see Bitcoin be regulated. He would like to see Bitcoin be registered and protected. He would like to see his company be one of the companies that that hodl this uh, protected and chosen asset. And he would love to see the government be used to protect Bitcoin. And as you were mentioning at the beginning of this video, to, to shoo away the competition, really. Yeah, that's right. So let's get into the article a little bit because that's a good kind of entry. But if, if he were to on. say, if, if Michael Saylor were to say, I don't like what's happening to my profits. I want the government to help me. It would sound like he's whining. And when you listen yeah. to him, he doesn't, he doesn't say it that way. Instead, he, he says, oh, oh, I'm really urging the government to come out and regulate all these other, other entities out there. Um, to right. Make it out of consu for consumer uh, protection, right? Because these are risky, sure. risky investments. And it's all about, you know, basically being paternalism it's a little bit of paternalism it's like i know that you you don't know what's good for you but i assure you that these other people do right and, so, and, yeah, and the reality is the michael sailor can't possibly know what's good for people when it comes to investment i mean there's a limit there's we are all limited in how much can be known that's why there's there's different elements of risks and there's things called black swans um but the the idea yeah. that um you Let's can. talk about this, this distinction he's making, because this is something we've talked about previously in regarding uh, regulation and legislation that's coming down. Uh, I know um, there's a senator from uh, Montana, I believe, to, or maybe I'm wrong, but it's uh, Toomey, Tumis, or Toomey or something, and, and she wants to, yeah. she, she, there's a legislation that's going through right now that she's supporting that would basically treat most of DeFi as a security correct? And anything with like a development team or a roadmap or management or some kind of guaranteed revenue uh, sharing, this is all basically being used to say, well, you're a security and those things will become registered. But what does that leave out? Well, it leaves out tokens like Bitcoin, which have no issuer, niche issuer or management team or employees or product cycle. And so they, that the idea here is that this is this is a, there's a concerted effort to draw a line between the projects that will be considered to be securities from those that are, which are not. And it seems to be that Bitcoin consistently is falling on the side that's not going to be a security. So with that as the background, that, that coming transition, Michael Saylor is definitely a player in that. He's, you know, he's, it's within, it's in his interest for, for these other tokens to be considered securities, right? Because clearly that would basically kill those projects. And I would even say, like, if you look at some of the projects that would be considered as a security, it's kind of ridiculous because the way those projects, Helium being a great example, me as an investor in Helium, I end up making profit off of the mining of the token because I'm setting up the infrastructure of the network that would completely flip that profit model to be something where all of a sudden now I can't do that, even though it's decentralized. It would be something where all of a sudden these particular protocols are heavily regulated and not able to operate in a way where I can just casually mine crypto passively. And now all of a sudden it's something where the they're being registered as securities where it's kind of more so a flip on the profit model where i'm the one who's building the infrastructure out and getting paid out in cryptocurrency and it would be much easier to just tax people continuously how we have been with crypto miners as income tax yeah that's for sure no uh, yeah um, i mean you there, there was there was you went a few different places there, income tax and, and other things. I, I would say that I agree, especially when it comes to defining the actions of what people do. We're, we're in a very gray 
uh, early immature time where people in positions of authority are coming up with rules and laws to explain something that is little understood and comparing many of these blockchain uh, processes to a traditional security where you're investing in a company and they're supposed to return a profit is completely different than people um, who aren't even investing dollars or pounds. They're looking at some blockchain unit of account, some made up token, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or Hex or right. whatever. But, but these tokens or these coins have a utility or a feature, whether they're used to, um, to, provide, to, to provide security for the chain, for staking and, and like a proof of stake network. So, or Helium, when you're, when your stake, when your mining is used to provide infrastructure for the road that everyone's driving on or infrastructure for the highway that people are sending their emails, the, the internet, if you're creating the infrastructure, it's a different relationship than a security. So I think yes. that a lot of time in the world of blockchain and crypto needs to be spent really not to rush in and figure out how we can force uh, this new technology into an old paradigm so that some people can make a quick buck and then we'll figure it out later. I think it's better to take a slow methodical approach and, and people first understanding what it even is that we are working with. What's the difference between a smart contract and a layer one um, smart contract platform, you know, in the air. There's a difference between proof of stake yeah. on a proof of stake network and staking a token. And these are nuances that aren't talked about when it comes to blanket, quick, you know, authoritarian regulation on, on how to make money. Um, it's, it's like a cash grab. It really just seems like a political cash grab. And when Michael Saylor comes out proclaiming that this new market needs regulation, we're talking about someone who has been spending a lot of other people's money because the reality is if you're a Bitcoin or crypto hodler, you're aware of the 80%, 90% dump risks. You've been through these cycles. We, we've been talking about it. Anyone who's been around has been talking about it. It's almost common knowledge to expect Bitcoin to correct 80 to 90% yeah. once it hits its high. So, uh, I mean, I, I really don't understand how... Uh, he could be at his level and not just admit he made a mistake because we yes. were making we were making videos months a ago, year ago a, year a year ago talking about the uh what the feds what ha gonna have to do with interest rates and what's that what that's gonna mean to traditional markets and how that's gonna ripple into crypto so in essence we've been warning or talking of a of a top and a correction and entering into the crypto winter for for a long time which we're obviously in and whether it's the first yeah month, and we're not and let me elaborate we're not you know geniuses that we we, we just paid attention to the press releases coming from the central bank right. you know it's they were they've been saying for a long time that they're going to hike rates but way before they actually started doing it and right. during this time period michael saylor is now has been doubling down on his Bitcoin purchases, you know, investing hundreds of millions of dollars at, at near, you know, near significantly higher valuations than where we're at right now. Not maybe at the top, but not far from, right? And so I feel like when he, he wants to focus on how Bitcoin's cross, cross collateralized with a lot of under, unregistered securities or DeFi tokens, and that when those blow up, that collateral gets put under pressure, and then that puts Bitcoin under pressure. And, and we're talking about, obviously, Luna Terra is an example of that. And uh, you could even look at Three Arrows Capital and Celsius as well as examples. And, and he's basically pointing to these, these projects as the reason why his Bitcoin position is, has been so hammered, right? And it's such, been such a losing position. But to your point, it's, it's like, no, nah, even without Luna Terra and without Three Arrows, you know, Bitcoin had already was already coming down. And in right. fact, it was and it's driven by fundamentals in the economy. And, and I'm talking about interest rates and monetary policy. These are fundamental determinants of prices. And if if you're going into a tightening regime of, of rate hikes and selling off the balance sheet, 
then the the that's not the time to make a position on like a tech stock or a, or a high risk you know nasdaq stock you know which is what bitcoin essentially is right it's a very high risk highly volatile tech play and it will go down in a rate hike environment along with a lot of other things right so i i feel like this is an example of an investor kind of pointing the fingers to uh, at others for his own his own bad poor decision judgment making. bad, bad decision, decision making, making. Yeah. looking for he's looking for a bailout and it's been um he, he's you know it's been nice to be the bitcoin godfather going around mainstream media to to talk about this um impeccable digitalist it's you know it's the universal property or whatever um he, he calls it which is it's great right kind of, people educating others on Bitcoin. Uh, but that being said, um, be prepared and be ready to hodl it because the reality is, is Bitcoin's pumped just as much on the allowance of these altcoins, these other crypto markets to exist. A, a lot of the value that exists in Bitcoin is due to these other markets. And I would say this, come on, Michael Saylor, come on, brother, come on, come on. Come on. I mean, you you do know how much risk and how much leverage and all the problems in the traditional markets. So to act like we need to come in and regulate crypto because of three arrows capital or because of, I mean, we've got a lot of players in the traditional markets that if one goes down, they all go down, which is why we've got this thing called too big to fail, right? I mean, how many? And the moral uh, hazard that comes with that? Right. So to act like we need we need regulators to come and step in, how is that going to do anything? Regulators have been in charge of the traditional market system where this is part of how the whole game works. So it, yeah. it's, uh, it comes across as a little disingenuous and, and kind self -serving, of self-serving, maybe very self-serving and yeah. nothing to do with the health of Bitcoin, blockchain or the crypto communities at large. It really seems to be just to affect protecting his pocketbook and from being wiped out should should the value of bitcoin continue to go further down yeah i agree that's my my take on it as well but if you disagree uh we're happy to discuss this with you michael saylor will do a, a live stream and you can tell us more about your understanding of uh bitcoin and crypto and why you think um the world would benefit, the economy would benefit, uh, the financial system would benefit from regulators coming in and making decisions on Bitcoin and the altcoin market. I would love to hear um, your take on this. And Indeed. And drop a comment if you're not Michael Saylor and you want to chat. We're, we're always, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll participate in a little back and forth and, you know, see if we can both learn something. And subscribe and hit the notification bell if you like to understand and learn a little bit about blockchain and crypto and its role in the economy at large. We do cover the macro outlook and we also get into the actual innovative blockchains and decentralized applications that are being built on a regular basis. So you know what to do. But until the next time, have a beautiful day and namaste, y'all.